Example two, we are to determine the quadratic function of the following parabola in both factored form, y equals a times x minus r times x minus s, and vertex form, f at x equals a times x minus p all squared plus q. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore those instructions for just a bit, and I'm going to go over here to the graph and figure out what I know. Let's look first of all at the fact that I know that x-intercept. That x-intercept has coordinates negative 3 and 0. This x-intercept has coordinates 1 comma 0. I also know the y-intercept. The y-intercept has coordinates 0 and negative 3. Now, Let's just stop there, because that now is the exact same information as I was given in example one. If you notice back up here in example one, they told me the x-intercepts, they told me the y-intercept. And I told you up here, when building a quadratic function, you should use y equals a times x minus r times x minus s if you know the x-intercepts, which we absolutely do. So I'm going to call this just kind of method one here. We know the x-intercepts. We know that the x-intercepts are x equals negative 3 and 1. So that's kind of like saying one of these can be r, r is negative 3, one of these can be s, s is 1. I also know the y-intercept. I know the y-intercept is 0 and negative 3. So I am going to use the orange factored form that I showed you up here. So I'll rewrite that in orange. We have got y equals a times x minus r times x minus s. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to substitute an r value of negative 3, an s value of 1. So that's going to give me y equals a x minus a minus 3, and x minus my s value of 1. Tidy up that first bracket. x minus a minus 3 is x plus 3, and then x minus 1. Now, to solve for a, to solve for a, you have to use the coordinates of a different point on the graph. Okay, so now I'm going to put that we solve for a using coordinates of a different point. And that different point could be our y-intercept. We have an x value. We have a y value. So in for x goes 0. In for y goes negative 3. So negative 3 would equal a times in for x goes 0 plus 3. In for x goes 0 minus 1. That gives me negative 3 equaling a times 0 plus 3 is 3, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So now, negative 3 will equal 3 times negative 1 is negative 3a, and I can now solve for a by dividing by negative 3. a turns out to be 1. Now, a isn't always going to be 1, guys. That's just kind of a, a freak accident here. We're now going to take that a value of 1, substitute it back in here, and you've got to give me the overall final answer, which would be 
y equals 1 times x plus 3 times x minus 1. And I'll highlight that. That's my answer in factored form. Okay, that's one way you can do that. Now, the other way, I haven't exactly left myself very much room here, but we'll work on it. Let's go over here to the graph. And let's say you didn't notice the x-intercepts. Let's say instead you noticed the vertex. And you look at that vertex and you think, hmm, coordinates of the vertex look to be like negative 1 and negative 4. So let's say you notice the vertex. And let's say you also notice this y-intercept. So you notice those two. Well, you could go over here. And because I have written up here, you should use y equals a times x minus p all squared plus q if you know the vertex. That's what we're going to use. So going down here, I'm going to say another way we could do this. We could take note of the fact that we know the vertex. We said that the vertex was located at negative 1 and 4. So the vertex is negative, or sorry, negative 1 and negative 4. By knowing the vertex, remember the vertex is always our p and q values. You also know the y-intercept, the y-intercept, which is same as we had before, 0 and negative 3. So if we were going to use y equals a, times x minus p all squared plus q, what we're going to do is substitute the p value in for p and the q value in for q as a first step. So we will have y equals a, x minus the p value is negative 1 all squared, and then a minus 4. Tidy that up. y equals a times that will be x plus 1 all squared minus 4. Now, just like we solved for a using the coordinates of a different point, we do that exact same idea. Solve for a using the coordinates of a of a different oh frozen screen one sec coordinates of a different point so how about using the coordinates up here of our y intercept x value, y value. So I'm going to take an x value of 0, substitute it in for x, y value of negative 3, substitute it in for y. So I would have negative 3 equaling a times in for x goes as 0 plus 1 all squared minus 4. This will give me negative 3 equaling now we got to do what's inside the brackets first. 0 plus 1 is 1 squared. 1 squared is just a 1a minus 4. Now solve for a. You can solve for a by adding 4 to both sides. And I will get a is 1. Notice you get an a value of 1 regardless 
of which way you choose to come up with your equation. You have to now take that a value of 1 and stuff it in to your standard or vertex form and give me the final answer. So my answer will be y equals 1 times x plus 1 all squared minus 4. And that is my answer in standard or vertex form. Now, by the way, what I'm going to tell you, if you foiled out factored form, if you were to foil all of that out, if you were to foil out standard or vertex form, and you tidied both of them up, they would be exactly the same function. So I'm just going to make one other little connector here. These are the same function. They're just written in different forms. And so moral of that story is, if you know the x-intercepts and the coordinates of another point, you should start with factored form. If you know the vertex and the coordinates of another point, you should start with your standard or vertex form.